Hey everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play The Flintstones, The Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. In our last episode, we beat the evil spider wizard and won the John Tesh basketball challenge. So now it's time to move on to the haunted tower. Uh, this first room shows us what we're going to be doing most of the time in this level, and that is uh, jumping and pulling on these Triceratops levers, which will open doors somewhere in the room, and then running into those doors before they uh, close. Here we've got some slow-moving platforms, nothing to worry about there. But yes, as you might expect, this is a haunted tower, and as a result it's filled with a variety of ghosts, like those two that we see there. Uh, luckily, we can stun ghosts with the slingshot or the club. Uh, since they're already dead, we can't actually defeat them, but stunning them is usually enough for us to sneak past without getting hurt. Uh, one thing I wanted to address, a question that was brought up a while back when we uh, did the hockey challenge, and that is, what exactly do we win from those challenges, the hockey and the basketball? In the first game, if you might recall, uh, each time we beat a challenge, we won some kind of a power-up, um, either the flying power-up or the swimming power-up, that we could use by uh, summoning the Great Gazoo. In this game, however, if you recall from the first episode, the Great Gazoo's power cannot penetrate the volcano flow, and as a result, we don't have any of his powers to help us this time around. Here we've got it unusual monster, the jumping watermelon. Deceptively dangerous, I would say. But anyway, about the prize that we won. Yeah, so there's no gazoo power-ups. So, try as I might, <laughs> I'm sad to say, I haven't really been able to figure out what exactly it was that we won. Um, my guess would be that that it was, uh, probably something like more hearts or more power or something. Um, the only other guess is that perhaps it was the uh, ground shaking ability where if we charge up our club all the way we can we can shake the whole screen and stun uh, certain enemies that are on the screen. Uh, again, I'm not exactly sure if... we might have had that power from the start, but I don't remember noticing it until uh, after we completed the hockey challenge, so that, that might have been it. But yes, as you can see now, we are at the boss of the haunted tower, and it is a witch. A witch! A witch! A witch! A witch! A witch! I recommend using Fred for this boss battle. Um, the main reason for that is that he can pretty easily reach both the upper level, as you just saw there, and the lower level with his club. And of course, you can charge up to do a more powerful hit, which will make the, ba the uh, battle go by a little faster. So, as you see me doing here, I recommend uh, standing on the edge of the table to take care of these two bats that appear. Yeah, that's the ground shaking power that I was telling you about. That might have been our prize. I'll have to go back and check and, and see if we've been able to do that from the beginning or not. Oh yeah, should be uh, nearing the end of this battle. Yep, there we go. And now we can collect this blue gemstone. And if I recall correctly, that is the last of the five gemstones. So, let's go talk to the pterodactyl. Ah, I see. You have some unusual gemstones. Why, yes we do. Let's have a look. One, two, and three here. That makes five. Ah! You've done it. You've brought me five precious gemstones. Ah! All right, we've done it. Good job, everyone. Now I will take you to Dinosaur Peak. Ah! All right, let's head to Dinosaur Peak. But only halfway up. Well, why only halfway? The pterodactyls in that neck of the woods are dangerous. Ah! Well, halfway is still better than nothing, so let's hop on board. Now, here we've got another 
uh, kind of a mini level, like the surfing level that we saw earlier. Where, as you can see, we're riding the pterodactyl, and there are a large number of rocks that are flying at us from just off screen. But thankfully, our pterodactyl friend can spit little, his own little rocks, and each time we break one of the uh, little rocks, we get a star, so really this is kind of like a bonus level. <laughs> the only difference is it's one that if you're not careful, you can die in, so gotta watch where you're going, and make sure you keep shooting rocks. Oh, but, as you can see, we've already reached the end of the level here. So, now we have reached Dinosaur Peak, finally. Let's look for our surprise, huh? Let's head up the peak. Yeah, this is a pretty interesting level here. Where we've got a good mix of uh, skinny platforms that we need Barney to climb, and these fat platforms that we can use Fred to climb. Oops, watch out for the flying pterodactyls. And as you can see, we can we can make our way pretty quickly up the mountain. Uh, I think we can make this jump here, right? Yeah, there we go. And they seem to give you a very large number of power-ups as you climb up this mountain here. I don't really know why that is, but apparently they want you to be prepared for what's to come. So let's take care of this guy so he won't dive bomb us. And now we are almost to the top. Just one more pterodactyl to worry about. See, they're not so dangerous, are they? And here we have it. This looks like it's a dinosaur. It spits fire. It rides on fire. It must be the fire dinosaur. It looks like he doesn't want to be too friendly with us, so we're going to have to uh, take him down with our slingshot if we want him to stop the volcano flow. So let's go ahead and do that. As you can see, I recommend using Barney for this level. Uh, it'll take a little while to land enough shots to beat the fire dinosaur, but if you just stand at a certain distance away from him, there's really no way for his fire to hit you, so it's a very easy battle in that respect. So there he goes, taken to the sky. And yeah, so if he lands in one of the uh, slots on the very end, just stand on one of these stones about two spots away and keep firing at him. If he lands in one of the middle spots, I just stand on one of the stones on the very edge and fire away. And, whoops, try not to miss him like that. But yeah, really nothing too difficult here. So we can pretty much just sit back and listen to this awesome background music. I haven't said too much about it yet, but if you're playing along at home, definitely turn it up and rock out. <laughs> I don't know if you've been keeping track at home, but as you can see, it takes quite a few hits to beat a fire dinosaur, but perhaps that's the uh, surprise of Dinosaur Peak. Alright, there we go. Now we've beaten him. And now we can jump into the volcano and find a way to stop this lava. Where did they go? Nobody beats me and gets away with it. Oh, well, looks like we haven't quite beaten the fire dinosaur. And he's following us into the volcano. So, I think we will uh, find out what happens on the next episode of Let's Play the Flintstones, the surprise at Dinosaur Peak. Until then, this is the Masked Cobbler saying so long and happy gaming. Bye-bye.